out tonight. First, I will give a very uh, brief introduction of uh, carbon dioxide. Then I will show three examples. And the first example is uh, the synthesis of the copper and reduced graphene uh, oxide non composites. And second example is the nanopost gold. And third one is the copper nanodendrites. And I will test their performance for the electrochemical reduction. Finally, a uh, uh, brief summary. So carbon dioxide is one of the major greenhouse gases and can be produced either naturally or uh, through the industry process. When you look at this uh, diagram, about 76% of the carbon dioxide uh, uh, is accounted as the main green, uh, greenhouse gas. And carbon dioxide is very stable, it's a linear molecule, and the overall is non polar but it contains uh, polar bonds uh, of the carbon and oxygen. This is why the CO2 carbon dioxide is soluble in water, but the solubility is not that high. So there are a number of uh, approaches or technologies could be a convert uh, carbon dioxide to value added products. Could it be through the uh, biological, chemical, or in uh, inorganic process? And also could be used for, uh, from the uh, benefit from uh, photochemical reduction and electrochemical reduction. And from the photochemical reduction and electrochemical reduction, you can produce uh, valid added products, for example, carbon monoxide, formic acid, uh, methane, uh, methanol, ethanol, and other C2 or C3 compounds. In this talk, I will mainly focus on the uh, electrochemical reduction of carbon dioxide. So as I said, carbon dioxide is very stable. This is why there are some challenges for the electrochemical reduction of carbon dioxide. So we can list overall the three. One is uh, uh, it uh, has a high overall potential, requires uh, high energy for the electrochemical reduction of uh, carbon dioxide. As a result, we do need a good catalyst for the process. And the second, for practical application, and the stability of the catalyst is an issue. And catalyst can be uh, uh, poisoned by impurities and the reaction inter uh, intermediates. And the third one is the product selectivity. And for electrochemical reduction of carbon dioxide, it may uh, form different products. And for application, we do need to do the separation and purification. In addition, there is a comp competing uh, reaction, which is hydrogen evolution reaction. So that is we call as a side reaction. To address these three issues, and we tried a different approach for the fabrication of different nanomaterials. So first example I, I will show you is fabricate, uh, to fabricate uh, copper reduced graphene oxide nanocomposites for the electrochemical reduction of carbon dioxide. So this scheme shows how do we fabricate the nanocomposites. We start from uh, graphene oxide and the copper sulfide as precursor. And we can mix the uh, mix solution. Then we use a drop casting on the copper plate. When, when after it is dry, we can use the electrochemical method to simultaneously reduce copper precursor and graphene oxide to form uh, copper nanoparticles and reduced graphene oxide. So here are the SEM images, and this is if we just we uh, start from graphene oxide, and we can form the reduced graphene oxide on the surface. And if we just use copper precursor, copper sulfate, we can produce uh, large copper partic uh, particles on the surface. But when we use uh, the mixture of the copper sulfate and the graphene oxide, we can produce the uh, copper nanoparticles and reduced the graphene oxide, and you can see the copper nanoparticles are uniformly distributed on the reduced graphene oxide surface. Then we can use the electrochemical method to look at the activity for the uh, reduction of carbon dioxide. And here we compare if we just start from uh, the copper plate, I think the activity is low for the uh, CO2 reduction. But if we modify the surface with uh, copper, we can see the uh, activity is increased. And when we modify the surface with reduced uh, graphene oxide, we also see 
uh, comparable uh, enhancement for the uh, CO2 reduction. But once we have the number composites, and you can see a uh, significant increase for the activity for the CO2 reduction, and this is for the copper reduced graphene oxide number composites. Then if we hold, and then we look at uh, the uh, for the look at the activity is uh, electrochemical impedance spectroscopy. And what we did here, when we hold the potential at minus 400 millivolts, and we hear the uh, electrochemical impedance spectroscopy, then we could use this circuit to fit the curve. And here is a table to show the fitting results. And all we can see the charge transfer resistance, okay, and with the copper reduced graphene oxide is much lower. So then we can increase the activity for the CO2 reduction. Then we try uh, uh, to optimize the uh, number composites. And first we optimize the copper, okay? And this is by change, we fix the volume, but by change the uh, concentration, we can optimize the copper. And also then we optimize the amount of the uh, graphene oxide. So this is the, by change the amount of the graphene oxide and we can behave. And this here we, we can uh, modify or optimize the number composites by change the copper and the amount of the graphene oxide and also the amount. And we found this is the optimized condition. And under this condition, we can achieve the highest activity for the number composites for the CO2 reduction. And then we fabricate the nano composites uh, uh, electrode and we test the performance at different potential in this case uh, and then we can see uh, in the uh, so this is in the CO2 such added uh, sodium bicarbonate uh, solution and of course as we expected when we increase the cathodic potential we did see the increase of the uh, current and for the CO2 reduction. But then the next question is uh, how can we determine the further efficiency or how much electricity or the charge uh, was used for the electrochemical reduction of carbon dioxide. And we know with the copper we could have uh, different products. And uh, in this case, actually we proposed uh, a, a new approach, which is a chemical oxygen demand a method and for the uh, detection of the uh, further efficiency for the liquid products. And the, uh, for the chemical oxygen demand, this method has been widely used for the water quality uh, insurance or control. And uh, this is the approach that any produced organic uh, liquid um, products, okay, and can be organized okay, and to produce uh, the uh, reverse reduction for CO2. And also we can test the uh, number of electron transfer for the oxygen. And from there, we can calculate how many or how much electricity was uh, used or how many electrons were used for the electrochemical reduction to produce the liquid products. And based on this uh, approach, uh, we can uh, determine the uh, the efficiency, so this is from the liquid product, and this is, we use uh, GC to identify the gas product. And from the GC analysis, we found carbon monoxide methane are the main gas product. And uh, so here, at different potential, we can see the uh, distribution of the phthalic efficiency is different for different products. And this is for the uh, carbon monoxide, and this is uh, for the liquid products. And as a lower poten uh, uh, potential, we can see the uh, third efficiency for, uh, to form the liquid uh, products is higher. Yeah. And then we further look at the uh, production rate, and we can see this is at, when we increase the cathodic potential, this you can see the enhancement of the production rate. And then we also look at the stability of nanocomposites and we thought we felt the electrodes and here we did not test, test long, but we only test about uh, uh, 15 hours and we found it is very stable during our test. So then we use uh, electrochemical FTR uh, technique and in situ to monitor the electrochemical reduction of carbon dioxide at the nanocomposites. And you can see from here, 
when we increase the cathodic potential from minus 0.1 volts to minus 0.6 volts, we can see the increase of the intensity of this peak. And this is the carbon dioxide. So basically tells us the, uh, con the, uh, when we increase the cathodic potential, and more carbon, di uh, carbon dioxide was reduced. And at the potential about minus 0.5 volts, we can start to see new peak and we can identify this is uh, the new species, which is uh, format, formation, and doing the electrochemical reduction. Now I'd like to show you another example, which is uh, nanopost gold, okay, and for the electrochemical reduction of uh, carbon dioxide. And we use uh, electrochemical uh, alloying and de alloying approach for the synthesis uh, of uh, nanopost gold. And we start from the, uh, the gold smooth surface. And with this approach, and, and we can, we can produce, and here we use uh, zinc as a count electrode. And first we can form uh, the nanopost uh, gold and zinc. And after the acid treatment under this condition, and you can form uh, the nanopost gold. And here are the SEM images and the we start from a smooth surface, which is gold, and this is we can form the nanopores uh, uh, gold and zinc, and this is at low magnification, and this is at high magnification. And after we remove the zinc, and again, we still can see the nanopores gold structure, and we, from here, we can see the pore size being increased when we form uh, nanopores gold from uh, the nanopores gold and zinc. So then we did further surface calculation, and here's uh, energy dispersive uh, spectra of the samples, and this is the gold, and this is nanopores gold and zinc, and here's nanopores gold. And here you can see the zinc, and from the EDX analysis, we can calculate the percentage of the zinc is about 7% in our sample. And then we did uh, further analysis with the X-ray deflection, and here's the pattern, again, here for the smooth surface, and this is for the nanopores gold and zinc, and this is for the nanopores uh, gold. And you can see some extra peak related to the uh, nanopores uh, gold and zinc. Then we tried to use uh, electrochemical method to determine the electrochemically active surface area. And we start from the, nano, uh, from the smooth surface, which is uh, uh, gold, and uh, this is a uh, sector of atomograms uh, uh, recorded in 0.1 molar soft acid. And when we use uh, the nanopores uh, gold and zinc, and this is a root curve, and we can compare the scale here. So this is why scale is much larger, okay? And uh, this is due to the uh, formation of the oxide, and this is due to the uh, reduction of the formed uh, gold oxide, okay? And when we uh, after we remove the zinc, actually we can see the curve here is become smaller. This is for the nanopores growth. And from uh, this peak, when we do the integration, and we can determine the electrochemical active surface area. And showing this table, okay. And this is for the smooth gold surface. And this is uh, uh, when we form the nanopores gold and zinc. And we can see the uh, uh, surface area, the, or the electrochemical active surface area, is increased by over 120 times. And when we remove the zinc, and the surface area is still increased, compared here, is about 70%, uh, 70 times, but compared with the nanopores gold and zinc, actually the electrochemically active surface area uh, is uh, decreased. And as we see, the pore size is increased. And then we look at the activity for the electrochemical reduction of carbon dioxide. And here is for the uh, smooth gold surface. The activity is low. And this is, uh, we have uh, the nanopores gold and zinc. And uh, the activity is increased. But it's, and then when we, after we re uh, remove zinc, and the activity is significantly increased. And you can see the current is much higher for the electrochemical reduction of uh, carbon dioxide. And then we also use uh, electrochemical impedance spectroscopy to look at the activity. And again, we, after we see the curve, and we can see the charge 
transfer resistance is uh, the number post gold is much lower. Let me uh, further test uh, the performance for the uh, for this uh, three lectures. So this is uh, this is for the smooth surface, and this is for the nanopores gold and zinc, and this is for the nanopores uh, gold surface. And again, when you look at the current, so this is base state current, and with the nanopores gold, it's much higher. And then we try to look at the for the efficiency for this, and for the nanopores gold, actually the, for the gold surface and the products is very unique and very specific, uh, very selective, and only carbon monoxide, carbon monoxide is generated. And when we use uh, the uh, smooth gold surface, and you can see the uh, fabric efficiency is between about 40 to 45, and the rest is due to the hydrogen evolution. But once we form the nanopore structure, and this is for the nanopore uh, gold and zinc, and the fabric efficiency is about 90%, okay? And the, the oxygen, uh, no, the hydrogen evolution is about 10%. But once we, after we remove zinc, we have the nanopore gold, and the fabric efficiency is much higher, it's about 95%. So basically, with this approach, we can efficiently uh, reduce uh, carbon dioxide to carbon monoxide. We can also look at the production rate, and we can compare. Because for the smooth gold surface, the uh, rate is so small, so this is why we have to enlarge this by 10 times. And we can see again, so there is the nanopore gold, and the uh, production rate, or the activity, is much higher. Now the next question for us to ask, what are the possible reasons for the significant enhancement of the nanopore gold for towards CO2 reduction? And we, we think about there are likely about four reasons. One, the removal of zinc, as we see. And second, the change of the electrochemical active surface area. And third one, the increase of the pore size and the fourth is the, uh, some new active sites may uh, create it when we remove uh, zinc with the acid treatment. And to test this, and as I said, we try to fabricate the uh, nanopore gold and nanopore zinc, uh, gold and zinc with a very similar uh, electrochemical active surface area. And then we look at the activity and we can see uh, although the electrochemical activity, the activity surface area is very similar, but after we remove zinc and the activity is much higher. So remove zinc will help the enhancement of the activity. And the second, we look at the uh, change of the electrochemical active surface area as we saw before, and we fabricate two samples and with the nanopore gold and zinc, actually with high surface area, and with nanopore gold with uh, low surface area. And you can see the activity for the uh, nanopore gold even higher. So say for the electrochemical activity, a surface area change is not the main factor in this case. And then the next one, we try to look at whether the change of the pore size may affect the performance. And when we change the number of cycles from 10 to 30 cycles, and we can change the pore size. And when we look at the activity in this case, okay, so this is from 20, uh, 10 to 40 cycles. And when we increase the number of cycles, we can see the slight increase of the electrochemical surface area. This is why we did see the increase of this uh, current. And this uh, current density was calculated uh, um, against uh, the geometric surface area. But when we normalize uh, the uh, activity with electrochemical active surface area, we found they are very similar, okay? And the last one is uh, where there is a new acid, uh, active sites uh, created during the acid treatment. And here we use the uh, lead uh, UPD approach and from the, uh, the previous studies and show us that the UPD, lead UPD is very sensitive to the surface structure. And with this approach, and we test our sample, and this is for the nanopores, uh, for the smooth gold surface, and this is for the nanopores gold and zinc, and this is for the nanopores gold. So during the 
acid treatment, basically we can uh, recreate some new active sites, which is called uh, 110 surface. Okay, so this is for the uh, non pole code, gold 110. And from the literature, we know that gold 110 surface is more active than gold 11 surface. Now, actually, I'd like to uh, briefly show the last example in this case, which is uh, the fabrication of uh, copper nanodendrites. And here in the scheme, we have to, uh, to fabricate the copper nanodendrites. We start from the uh, titanium plate, use electrochemical deposition, we can form copper thin film on the surface. Then we use different approach for the treatment. One is we say we cast in some uh, uh, copper sulfate solution, the heat sample, and then we, up, then we use the electrochemical reduction, and we can form the copper particles on surface. And in this case, if we add uh, some uh, soft acid on the surface with the heat treatment after reduction, uh, we can form the copper nanoparticles. And with both mixture, then after the treatment, we can form copper nanodendrites. And here are the SEM images to show uh, the, um, uh, the uh, products. And this is a copper thin film, and this is a oxygen, so, uh, uh, oxide derived copper thin film. This is a after the heat sample without anything, uh, without anything. So that is what we formed. And this is for the copper particles we formed, as I said, and this is oxide derived copper nanoparticles. And this is the new product we can see is the copper nanodendrites formation formed. And then we can look at, use the XRD to look at the structure of the formed different copper-based nanomaterials. materials. Then we take the activity for the electrochemical reduction of carbon dioxide. And here is the cycle of grams. And this is for the carbon film and oxygen and uh, oxide derived carbon film, carbon nanoparticles, and copper uh, particles or copper nanoparticles. And this is for nanodendrites. And again, you can see with the carbon nanodendrites, the activity is much higher. And this is if we hold the potential and we can, we can compare the steady state activity for the electrochemical reduction of carbon dioxide. Let me use the uh, in situ electrochemical FTR technique to look at the electrochemical reduction of carbon dioxide on the nanodendrites. And in this case, we increase the potential from zero up to about minus uh, six, uh, 600 millivolts. And you can see when we increase the potential, we can see the increase of the uh, peak uh, intensity this is peak is, we can say is, uh, the carbon dioxide, uh, carbon dioxide, and shows us, uh, when we increase the cathodic potential, and the uh, more carbon dioxide was, uh, uh, reduced. Okay. And from here, we can also identify the new, uh, products, uh, from here. So we could form, uh, formate and acetic acid and, uh, melatonin. And we did further analysis with MR to further confirm the products. Uh, for in the uh, liquid products. In addition, we tried to use uh, in situ electrochemical FTR technique to look at the kinetics of the electrochemical reduction of the CO2 at the nanodendrites. And here, the spectra, we can recommend the spectra with a few seconds, and this will start, this is uh, six seconds. And when we increase the time, we can see this is under the same potential, which is uh, minus 400 millivolts, okay? And uh, when we increase the time from here, six seconds, and uh, to uh, here, uh, about 80, 80 seconds, we can see the increase of uh, uh, the, uh, the intensity of the CO2 peak, and also you can see the gradual increase of the product peak, okay? And uh, so here's when we further increase from the 86 uh, second to about 100, uh, seconds. And after one second, we can see the behavior is totally different. And this means actually we have, uh, we use a similar structure and the amount of carbon dioxide in the similar uh, is uh, limited. And after CO2 is reduced. And here is another behavior we can see is due to the water splitting, which is the hydrogen evolution. And from this study, we can look at we can we can use uh, in situ FTR to look at the kinetics 
of the electrochemical reduction of uh, carbon dioxide. So in brief uh, summary, and we have uh, fabricated copper reduced graphene oxide, nanopost gold, and copper nanodendrites, and we tested the performance for the CO2 reduction. A uh, uh, ke uh, chemical oxygen demand method has been proposed for the determination of the third efficiency of the liquid products do, uh, from, from the electrochemical reduction of carbon dioxide. And the possible reason for the significant improvement of the catalytic activity of the nanopost gold has been uh, uh, identified. The formed carbon nanodendrites uh, shows enhanced activity for the CO2 uh, reduction. And we have also demonstrated in situ electrochemical FTR spectroscopy can be used for the study of the kinetics of the electrochemical reduction of carbon dioxide. And uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank my research group and for their hard work. And also I'd like to uh, uh, thank the funding agency for their support and thank you for listening.